Welcome back to my channel. I have an exciting topic today. Most of the questions from you guys are, where are the most haunted places that you have investigated? And I just thought I would give my two cents on the two places that I have investigated the most. So one, of course, I've mentioned before we're not going to talk today about is the Stanley Hotel. When I lived in Colorado, it was basically in my backyard, an hour to an hour and a half drive. So anytime we wanted to go stay somewhere haunted for the night and investigate or just have an experience, we would drive up to Estes Park, Colorado. But we will be talking about the more sinister of the two places, which is a place in Thornton, Colorado called Riverdale Road. Now honestly, Riverdale was actually probably about 45 minutes from my house. Um, I lived on the west side of Denver and Riverdale is located on the north side of Denver. But if you look at both of these pictures, um, the, these trees that are here, that's actually what most of the trees on Riverdale Road look like. Uh, the road stems back all the way to like the 1700s, 1800s. And um, it's super, like on this side, it's super long. Um, it used to be a dirt road. It isn't a dirt road anymore. Um, but it was about 11 miles of, of dirt road. So it's kind of turned into a Colorado urban legend, I guess you could say. I did decide to research it before doing this YouTube video. I've actually never researched Riverdale Road, to be honest. Everything that I know is um, a generational thing that's passed down from like your parents or like the neighborhood kids or whatever about how haunted it was. Um, I was actually really shocked and excited to see that people had been writing on forums about experiences they had on Riverdale Road uh, because I've never checked it out because it was just one of those places that I grew up with. So now I want to warn you guys, if you do decide to do your research on Riverdale Road, uh, that's great, that's cool, but do remember that there's a lot of things out there that I read that um, people don't really have the story straight, it's been twisted, it's probably been... Um, pulled and, and swung a few different ways just with different people. I've been there to investigate so many times. Like, I mean, I think I started investigating up there when I was like 15. And uh, we actually have done a lot of research over the years where, you know, living in Colorado slash Denver, I was able to access some of the archives. I have tons and tons of footage of Riverdale Road but it's all on tape decks because we had the old school tape deck Sony's. If I can find them and post them, I will try to do that in the future. So the big question is, what is Riverdale Road? If it comes up on the internet when you search it so much, it's actually now claimed to be one of the most haunted spots in Colorado or even the West. What makes it so special? So the 1800s, 1700s, it was mostly just empty land, basically like this. A lot of farmers had the land up in Riverdale Road and you know they just used it for farming back then they did have a lot of slaves that were out there working these fields miles and miles of fields and it's actually claimed that some of the farmers that own this land would end up hanging them from these trees so one of the local legends is when you drive down riverdale road uh, sometimes depending on the, t the time of night you can see bodies hanging from the trees have i ever experienced that no no i haven't ever experienced that there's also a lot of traces back to like Native Americans living here um, that they would camp out in this area, especially like in the 1800s. It's on the north side of Denver, so they think it may have been a route when they were traveling up into like Wyoming or even Montana and they would kind of make a base camp here. It's actually been claimed that there is an Indian burial site here on Riverdale Road somewhere. 
Um, of course, because it was in the 17 and or 1800s, it's not documented, unfortunately. I do have an interesting story about that, but we'll get into it in a little bit about my experiences. There's a lot of claims that there's been witchcraft that's been done here, there's been devil worship that's been done here, satanic rituals. Um, I mean, obviously none of that is documented. However, I do believe that um, there's there was a haunted house. There was a house that had been abandoned. Um, it ended up catching fire when it was abandoned and then they had to tear it down. Um, I do believe that people had broken in at that point. I think it was in the 70s or so um, and that had burned down to the ground. We'll get to that in just a minute. There's claimed to be a bride ghost that basically walks this pavement. Um, the legend of this is a woman was either lost from her, her groom or she left her groom and decided to walk on this road all the way home and she was hit and killed. And you know, I've heard a lot of people discuss this and, and if they've witnessed it, if this is true, which I have never witnessed it, it sounds more like it is residual activity versus intelligent activity. So it, it what it claims to happen, she'll either walk up to your car door and then disappears before she goes to go in because you're gonna give her a ride, or sometimes strangers have given her a ride and after she gets in, then she disappears in your car. So it sounds more like it would be some sort of a residual haunt. There's a spot that a jogger was supposedly killed and it's called Jogger's Hill. And what they claim is if you pull over onto Jogger's Hill, and you roll your windows down and sit on the hill, you can hear the jogger start running at you from really far behind, and pretty soon he's up like next to your car. Sometimes you can hear him run past your car, sometimes you have handprints on your car, and he's actually even claimed to have hit the windows on your car. People have claimed to see demons here that actually take the form of animals. People have claimed that they've seen like talking animals and even like coyotes and foxes walking on two hind legs that are actually communicating with each other or with other animals. So that's an interesting connection. They're, the biggest thing that Riverdale Road is known for is something called the Gates of Hell that is supposedly guarded by black hellhounds. And um, I will get into that with you guys in just a little bit. The complaint from the 60s and even the 50s and before that is that people would be driving down this road at night um, this is, like I said, what the original road looked like. There was no lighting. There was no, um, you know, any sort of street lights that are typical because it was pretty much in the middle of nowhere. This is before, like, manufacturing took over and before lots of land would actually be purchased and sold and, and turned into housing. A lot of the street signs that were like, you know, road goes this way or turns uh, would look like they had blood splatter on them. Now, when I would actually go to Riverdale Road, you did see stuff that looked like blood splatter, but I mean, honestly, that would have been in the 90s, 2000s. At that point, I would assume that it was like colored egg or even um, balloons being thrown at it with some sort of like maybe jello or some film inside of it or even paintball guns. There's also a phantom of a little boy that was hit on this road and sometimes he stops and asks people for a ride or sometimes you just see him walking down the road by himself. So there's supposedly a coyote and a wolf and if you see these two on the road, um, it, well, how does the theory go? The gray fox is evil, but if you see the coyote, it is there to protect you. So it's basically if you see this coyote or this gray wolf cross your path three times, after the third time you die. Do I believe that? Not necessarily. There's a lot of theories that a man murdered his family. A man supposedly owned a property and a home and he shot and killed his entire family and burned the house down, but that's actually not true. It has been mixed up as an urban legend with another story, which I'll get to you guys in a minute. Okay, in 1864, there was something that was built that was called the Woolport Mansion. It actually served as a few things. It was a private home, it was a cowboy inn, it was a gambling bar, it was a brothel, it was served as a ranch for people with horses, and they would even actually stable pe people's racing dogs there. The large iron gates to the front of this property, which it was a massive property, the gates are still there. Or at least the last time I was there, the gates were still there. The address gets mixed up a lot. The actual address, which I'm not even sure if it comes up on Google if you were to research it, it's 9190 Riverdale Road. The only reason I'm giving that address out is because that entire lot of land or area is pretty blank or like I said, at least it was the last time that I was there. Now it's claimed that there is some sort of an underground room slash chicken coop that's located at this area. 
So now there's been a couple of eyewitnesses that have come forward um, and that have talked about they were kids and they were researching the property. Uh, they broke into the property in the 70s before the house was torn down. And when they got inside the house because it was abandoned, they realized that there had been some sort of like squatters or maybe satanic worshipers that were there and they were actually doing animal sacrifices inside of the house. This is when they saw animal carcasses and blood splatter everywhere. And um, then all of a sudden, within that same year that these people were investigating this abandoned house, uh, they would actually drive by really late at night. There was no electricity that had been connected to this house since it was built in the 1800s and it's literally kind of in the middle of nowhere on Riverdale Road. And all of a sudden when they would drive by, the house was fully lit. So it was probably candles inside of the house. And this is when anyone that lived on Riverdale Road believed that there had been squatters or people that had broke into the house and had started doing satanic worship. When this had actually been the Wolpert Mansion, I'm assuming this underground area actually originally had been some sort of like a wine cellar. But when these people broke in, they turned this wine cellar into sort of this chicken coop area. And that was also where they would withhold people or whatever they were sacrificing inside of it. Once again, this would have been sometime in the 1970s. At some point, the squatters set the house on fire, whether it was by accident or whether it was on purpose but the fire department did show up, they put the flames out, and whoever owned the property at that point did decide to tear down the entire house. I do believe there had been a red barn that was also a part of the property. It stayed up for a little bit longer, but eventually the barn was also torn down. Now this is where we get into the gates of hell. Where this rumor slash, you know, urban legend started, I don't know. Now, like I said, the gates to the actual house used to be up there. I don't know if they're still there or not but that would be where you could pinpoint where this location was. Because there was satanic worshiping that was done actually on the property, and you know, beings, animals, and people possibly were held inside of this wine cellar, it has now been claimed to be turned into this gate of hell, which is what is supposedly guarded by hellhounds. There's been a lot of people that have claimed they've been chased off the property by the hellhounds. I have actually been on the property. Um, I can say that it's a very strange area. Um, it just doesn't feel like Earth, I guess, is the biggest thing to explain it as. The energy feels really strange. There's a lot of movement going on in the air. Um, we didn't do any EVPs that night, and the main reason was is they had signs up for no trespassing, and there had been people coming by to check on like security. Um, so I don't know if someone had hired security, but we just didn't want to get in trouble for trespassing. So we did not get any decent investigating in. We didn't find the wine cellar. Um, you know, if something, if the house has been torn down, I'm assuming, yes, that the wine cellar is still there. It's underground. Basically, people claim they have found it, and it's this underground, basically, giant room. There is another location on Riverdale Road that is this giant tree, like, kind of like this big cottonwood tree. Most of the trees on the road are cottonwood trees. And actually, the center of the tree is kind of hollowed out. It's not something any human has done. It's just the way the tree has grown over, you know, hundreds of years. So it's like your typical, like, kind of weeping willow hollow tree and the inside's out. It's claimed if you go into this area that you will, you know, hear the cries and screams of children. There's also a couple of phantom cars that go up and down this road. One is supposedly in the 1970s, a Camaro was racing on this lovely gravel road. Um, the picture that you guys can see right now, this is a fairly straight shot of a part of Riverdale Road. But do take in mind this road is about 11 miles long. Most of the road is completely twisty and turny. It's very, there's a lot of curves. Um, and back in the day, you know, there was absolutely no lights on this road, even when I would investigate in the 90s and in the 2000s. So I can't imagine in, you know, the 70s, there was hardly any houses out there. So it would be very, very possible for someone to wreck like a Camaro. It's claimed that this Camaro has chased some people off of the road, either maybe hoping that these people will wreck as well. Uh, maybe people have kind of referred to it as some sort of a Grim Reaper. And there's also been a phantom truck um, that basically really rides your tail up and down the road, um, trying to, you know, scare you off the road, basically. So just for some facts on the table that we need to get out of the way, obviously it's, it's a fact that this road is very long, very curvy. Um, now there is many, many housing developments, and there are not many areas like this anymore. 
there have been murders that have taken place on this road. There have been bodies that have dump been dumped on this road. That's obviously before the housing developments were built not even 10 years ago. So generally speaking, especially when it was a gravel road, of course it was dangerous. There was you know, many accidents where people would run into these giant cottonwood trees and they would die you know, because of their vehicle. Um, many times people would race up and down this road and they would slip on the gravel and they'd roll their car and die. So of course there has been a lot of real life deaths that have been linked to this road. The worst story probably that's a fact that was, um, I believe it took place in 1988. There was a girl that was in high school, she was either 18 or 19 years old. Her name was Heidi McGuire. She was working at a local Circle K that was off of, I want to say near 136th and um, Colorado Boulevard, which if you're from Colorado, everybody knows what Colorado Boulevard is. She was abducted from her job and she was taken to Riverdale Road in her vehicle, I believe. Her vehicle was abandoned and her body, she was strangled and dumped um, basically on the side of Riverdale Road. No one ever found out who did it. Um, no, I don't think anyone was ever held accountable. A lot of her classmates predicted that it was someone that was involved um, at school. Supposedly there was a boy that had gone to school there that had a crush on her and shortly after her death he disappeared and so did his family. They all moved out of state. Could that have been him? Who knows? Nobody really knows. Her body was found, I believe it was on either Christmas Eve or New Year's Eve um, of 1988 and I think some kids, local school boys, found her. Her body was in the snow on Riverdale Road. Relating back to the witchcraft, other than the slavery that there were slaves that were supposedly hung on these huge cottonwood trees, when the witchcraft took place, it's also claimed that around the same time of Salem, Massachusetts stuff was going on, that there were witches that were actually found to be living on Riverdale Road and they were also hung from the trees. This is also part of the urban legend. They believe maybe that the witches had cursed the land of Riverdale Road when they were hung from the trees. A lot of arrowheads are still found to this day in the miles and miles of land of Riverdale Road. So there's other legends like if certain parts of the area, if you pull over, you'll hear a heartbeat. Sometimes people can smell the stench of death like, um, I don't know if you guys have ever been near a mortuary where they actually burn the bodies for cremation, um, but that sort of scent a lot of people have claimed. A lot of people say they hear disembodied voices or even chanting. And now let me tell you about my experiences on Riverdale Road. So of course this is one of my favorite places because growing up as a teenager sometimes you don't have the best things to do, so what were my hobbies with my friends? We would go to a haunted location. So, you know, we didn't really have any equipment growing up as kids. We definitely would hear voices. We were brave enough to go out into the fields of Riverdale Road. Looking back, probably wasn't the safest thing for teenagers to be roaming out there, especially when people have been murdered out there. Um, but, you know, we never really captured anything um, as far as evidence, and that's because we weren't really trying. When I was about 19 years old, we took a group of us up there and started taking photos, and we also took a digital recorder. And it was really interesting, on the, I'll try to find the photo, there's no guarantees, but one of my friends stood on the side of the road, and he's a male, his name is Mike, and he just stood there very calm. And when we had the photos developed, because it was like the old school Kodak throwaway cameras, it actually looked like a hand was, it was basically like this part of the arm to the hand, like someone was choking him, just floating in midair. And we'd also gotten EVPs. We did experience the jogger running by our car, um, and there was actually a point that something was hitting the top. We had a, we were in a Mustang and something was like flicking the top of the metal of the Mustang, so we did hear that. You know, like I said, back in the day when we went to Riverdale Road, there wasn't any housing developments. It was still partially gravel, still very unlit, very dark area. And so if you were to pull over in the middle of Riverdale Road, turn your lights off and turn the sound of an engine off, it was eerily silent. There were some times that we did hear um, the heartbeat, the faint heartbeat sound that everybody claims that you hear, um, that was pretty, um, it was strange, really strange. So after Paranormal Challenge aired, I had, I had befriended a lot of people that were actually on Paranormal Challenge on different episodes. There was another group that had come to Colorado to visit 
and we all decided to go to Riverdale Road and do kind of a semi-thorough um, investigation. That was a really strange night. So the night that we went up to do this investigation, I had probably been the most experienced investigator time-wise and especially being on Riverdale Road. I'd gone there so many times. So I knew the actual location really well, even in the dark. And so I had the teams pull over into this certain area and park the vehicles and I knew where to get out and walk around. So we started walking around and <clears throat> all of a sudden, I would say about 30 to 40 minutes in, I was really confused as to where we were because all of a sudden we were surrounded by all of these like bodies of water. And I don't mean like oceans, I mean like little lakes, like there was like streams and then there was lakes and there was like... And it, you know, we never, where I took my team, we never wandered far off the road. And if anyone's watching this that's from Thornton or from Colorado, you know there isn't like giant bodies of water anywhere really near the road. Especially we were on the north side of, um, let's see. We were north of 104th. So once we got up to this location, I'm confused because we're just like, in a spot I've never seen before. We started investigating, we did have night vision cameras, and we actually got a lot of lights, um, like light anomalies that were responding to us. We got um, a lot of EVPs, we got a lot of really, really strange stuff going on. Finally, we kind of stood in silence where this water was and started listening, and we could hear this like Indian chanting in the background. And it didn't sound like satanic worship, it definitely sounded like Native American chanting. And trust me, no one else was out there, especially for that many people to be chanting. So now, at this point, we've been wandering around for three or four hours, and <clears throat> I'm really upset because we can't find the cars. I feel completely, like, discombobulated. I never have felt like this before, and I can't really understand why I'm feeling this way. I don't ever usually lose my sense of a direction, especially in Colorado. I mean, I'm native to Colorado, and, and this area in particular I've been to so many times. So on our cell phones, you know, when at that point, that was about 2011, so I mean, what, maybe iPhone 1 generations had been out. It wasn't super fancy, but according to our phones, we'd been gone for about 45 minutes to an hour. But when we finally found the cars and like where we had parked, we realized we had about three or four hours of videotape footage. How is it that we were only gone for about 45 minutes? Definitely some sort of like a vortex, time warp here, portal, I don't know. Still confused to this day where I was and what I was seeing because I, in fact, I'm gonna be honest, we went back up there like a week later to try to find these bodies of water and they weren't there, they didn't exist. And I'm still confused as to why, where the water came from and where it went. That was a really super strange experience. I decided to set up a official investigation after that. And since this investigation was going to be at Riverdale Road and we resided in Colorado, me and two of my friends made the trip up to Riverdale Road one night without any equipment. And this was only to scope out where we were gonna decide to basically pull over and shoot footage and um, you know investigate. We wanted to make sure it wasn't anywhere that had no trespassing signs and that we were able to access the locations. So we started at the very end of Riverdale Road, which is the most south point, which is around 90th, and it goes all the way up to about 136th, if I'm right. So everything seemed normal until we passed about 104th, which if you know the area, that's a pretty main road. Once you pass 104th, you kind of go past a couple of curves and turns, and that's when it really starts to look like Riverdale Road. So Joggers Hill, if I'm right, is about 120th, 26th, somewhere in there. That's about where we were. That's where this phantom jogger, you know, we've experienced that stuff. Once again, Aaron, actually from Paranormal Challenge, was there with me that night, um, and my friend Lisa, but we weren't there to investigate. We were only here to say, okay, this looks like a good spot to shoot. Yes, let's know this is a good spot to shoot, stuff like that. When we got past Joggers Hill, if you've ever been on Riverdale Road, at that point even, still there wasn't a ton of buildings and, and houses that have been built. It's a very long, narrow road just like this, and um, no lighting. So when you get from this point to where the very end is back here, you would be able to see a car coming because it's so, so, so dark and such a long, narrow shot. So out of nowhere, as I'm driving, 
I mean, I didn't see this car even like pull out of the side of the ditch. This car comes up and starts tailgating me. I'm really angry because I'm assuming it's like some like little shithead teenage kid that's like trying to scare me off the road because they do that, especially because they know it's haunted. And so I'm so mad that this guy, he's like revving his engine. We're dri I have a Mustang at the time. Um, and so I'm driving in the Mustang, Lisa is in the passenger seat, and Aaron from Paranormal Challenge is in the back seat. I'm so mad because there is room, if the guy is really dying that bad to go around me, if I'm not going fast enough, then he can go around me because there's no way I'm going to end up as another statistic on Riverdale Road as a dead body that slammed into one of these cottonwood trees. He will not pass me. All he's doing is he's running up really close to my car, revving his engine and then slowing down and going back. And it's just the whole time. Also, if you've been to Riverdale Road, there are not many turnoffs. And if there is a turnoff, you better make sure you know where you're going because most of the turnoffs go to nowhere. I knew that at the end of Riverdale Road would lead to 136th, which is kind of like a main highway, it goes to another highway. So I told myself, if I can just get there and like pull over or, you know, something, we will be surrounded by more people than just in the middle of Riverdale Road kind of abandoned. So there was no way I was going to make the choice to pull the car over and stop. He was either going to go around me, have to ram us, or wait till we got to the end of 136th. So we're about 120th. The end of the mile is 136, so that means I have 16 blocks to drive with this truck trying to rear end me. I literally, you guys, I had to turn the rear view mirror away, I had to turn the side mirrors away because the distraction driving on a jet black street with gravel and curvy was like making me want to wreck because I was getting nervous and I was like watching him instead of watching the road so I turned the mirrors away so that I could drive. Lisa was a panic mess. She wasn't really an investigator. She helped me do kind of like the organizing part of doing a ghost hunt. So she wasn't used to dealing with something like this, especially for this car to come out of nowhere. I'm so mad, I'm driving, I told Lisa, please stop panting, cause she's like, <sighs> you know, like she's freaking out. I said, please stop. I said, just sit next to me. And I said, just stay calm, cause I don't wanna wreck the freaking car. And so I tell, I tell Aaron, I said, look, I don't know who this asshole is, but I said, what I want you to do is I want you to turn around. He is so close to the Mustang and we're so low to the ground, it's obviously a truck because the way he sits higher. I said, I need you to get his license plate and try to see what he looks like. The next thing that Aaron said to me freaked me the fuck out. Aaron is like turned around, I'm still driving, I'm not gonna speed, I'm not gonna wreck the freaking car. And then after a few minutes, cause you can tell Aaron's turned around trying to see, you know, like out the window and Aaron turns back around and goes, I have something to report. And he's like, you're not gonna like this. And I said, what? And he goes, he doesn't have a license plate. And I said, okay, can we still call 911 and tell him what he looks like, what color is the car? And then he turns around and looks at me and he says, there's no driver. Lisa did not believe it. Lisa was like, I, I wasn't here to do a ghost hunt. I was here to look at, you know, locations and that was it. Lisa crawls into the back seat to look out the back window with Aaron. And Lisa goes, oh my God, Crystal, there is no freaking license plate. It looks like it's a, like maybe a gray or a white or a silver truck. But she goes, his high beams are on and there is no one freaking driving it. And I was like, okay, two of my really good friends, because I mean, I can't look and I, I don't want to wreck the car. Two of my friends have now confirmed that there's no license plate. It looks like a ghost truck. Basically, they can't really tell what color it is and there's no one driving it. So in my head, I'm like, the only thing that needs to be my priority is getting everybody safe out of there. So finally, if you've driven on Riverdale Road, there's a point where I would say not every single street is marked. The streets are like numbered. So it goes 120, 121, 122, all the way up to 136. I would say somewhere maybe around 129th or 130th, you can see where 136th is, which is this really kind of like big highway where a lot of traffic drives. So finally, I see the road and I'm like, okay, we can make it. We can get there, we're almost there. There's kind of like a farmhouse that's off to the left side. So, take in mind the road's still dark, it's still curvy. 
and all of a sudden we get to probably where like 132nd, 133rd would be as we're driving. All of a sudden the truck stops in the middle of the road like behind us. Cause like now we don't hear the engine revving, we don't see it in the rearview mirrors. And Aaron and Lisa are turned around. I'm not going to look because I don't want to wreck. Aaron and Lisa go, the truck stopped and it's doing a UE in the street. It's turning around. So I was like, what? You know, like this person, if the, I'm still trying to like logically understand what just happened. I'm like, this person was so in a hurry to get me off the road. What the F? You know, he's just going to turn around. So I, instead of going to 136th, I pulled over off onto the side of the road near the, this little farmhouse thing. They and myself watched this truck do a U-turn in the road. I still don't know what color it was because now we're, we're kind of far, so all you can see is the headlights and the brake lights. I watched this with my own eyes, guys. As the truck turns around and it goes to go the same direction that we just came from, since it's a pitch black road, you should be able to see those bright red tail lights and, and brake lights driving off. He turned around, drove for about five seconds, and there were no headlights and no brake lights and no tail lights. So now Aaron and I are like, you know, you guys know him from Paranormal Challenge. We're both like, I have never seen anything like that. You know, like him and I had been investigating for so many years together and then for us to experience that, we were like, what the hell happened? A normal person would have said, I'm going to get on 136, get on the highway and leave and go back to Denver and go home. And no, what do Aaron and I do? We decide we're going to turn around because now we're curious. Now that we realize this is a ghost truck, we've never dealt with one of these things. Let's try it again. Another weird fun fact is that all of our cell phones at this point had died. So stupid here decides to turn around and go back down. Riverdale Road, the same way I just came. So now I'm coming back down to about Riverdale Road and McKay. This location is supposedly where they found Heidi's body from 1988 when she was abducted from the Circle K. As we're driving by McKay, we realize on the opposite side of the road is a vehicle that is running. It's like, you know, in park. All of the lights on the inside of the car are on. The headlights are on. The doors are shut. And there is no person inside of the car and no person outside of the car. It was some sort of a hatchback. I don't know if I can really remember what kind of car it was. Like maybe a Honda hatchback or something. It was older. I would say it could have been a 90s model. You know, for a minute, we did kind of slow down to look around to make sure that like no one was hurt or anything in the street, which was really probably stupid considering what we had just gone through. But now, instead, we decide that we're going to drive back down Riverdale Road. And so we're going kind of slow because I just thought something about that car like gave me a funny gut feeling. You know, it just didn't feel right. Like there was something going on. A little bit past that, or maybe it's even on McKay, somewhere in that area, there is a stop sign. Actually, to this day now, I think they've converted it into a stoplight, but before it was just a stop sign. So we're at the stop sign waiting for traffic to clear because the other passing street did not have a stop sign. And honest to God, I shit you not, that car that was in the other lane decides, and we haven't seen any person around it or anything, it, store, it starts to drive towards our car, my Mustang, in reverse, towards us. And I swear you guys, I gunned that car, my Mustang, so fast. I did drive like a hellion going around those curves that time. I knew that part of Riverdale Road better than the, the other half that I was in, that, which is the more northern half. I've never driven that fast. It probably followed me maybe a hundred and like 6th, right before you hit 104th, which is a main road too. I was so weirded out that night. Like, I just didn't feel right. Like, I I felt I felt like I had, you know, the Camaro is the other car that they see. It's claimed that there's also the truck. I know we experienced the truck. I saw it with my own eyes. I've never heard of this hatchback car, you know. It is claimed that Heidi, when she was murdered in 1988, that um, the, the person took her car and dumped it on McKay, and that's where her body was found. We tried to correlate that with Heidi, 
we actually did get um, EVPs of something following us home that was giving us the name Heidi. Was that her trying to let us know that like she's trapped there and stuck? I don't know. So now a month or so went by, I had told my friend Sam about Riverdale Road and he and I decided to make a trip up to Riverdale Road during the day. Sam was like, there's no way I want to go up there at night, but he's like, I would like to see it during the day. So we drove through Riverdale Road and honestly that had been the first time I had ever been on Riverdale Road during the day. I was shocked to see that every single yard on Riverdale Road has like 10 to 20 crosses in the yard, but it was the strangest thing you'll ever see in your life. It was crosses, crosses, cross. it's just weird. Why are all these people, why do they have crosses in their yard, you know? The problem is, is that there's kids that go up there and I feel like it's kind of been disrespected a bit. I think that the whole area for some reason is, is like a portal or a vortex and there has been some terrible stuff happen on the road. Um, but a lot of the local legends and lore that have come out of that are pretty ridiculous and inaccurate. So make sure you check your facts before you start doing that. One of the places, of course, that I miss being available in Colorado is Riverdale Road. And before I left Colorado, we did decide to make a trip up there not to investigate. It was another day trip. It was kind of my farewell to Riverdale Road because I really feel like that was one of the places that I kind of got my bearings as an investigator, you know, starting in high school. And I was pretty shocked to see that most of Riverdale Road no longer looks like this. Now Riverdale Road um, is pretty covered in all, you know, houses. Most of the construction has gone up and they've turned all of the land into homes. I did call a realtor though when I was driving through because there had been a sign that had said like these houses were lowered and they were lowered again and then they'd been lowered again. And I asked the realtor, you know, why they had been lowered so much that I might be interested in buying one. And the realtor said that um, there wasn't a lot of good, uh, you know, press that had been written on Riverdale Road. And I acted kind of silly. I said, you know, what do you mean? And she had said that she had had people that had purchased some of the homes and they were extremely haunted from living on the land and they actually either would rent them out and the renters wouldn't stay and then even the owners were trying to sell them. So I just think that Riverdale Road's very haunted. I, I don't know if maybe it's from witchcraft, if it's from like satanic worshiping, if it's from Native Americans setting curses on the land, nobody really knows. I do know it's one of the strangest areas I've ever been and I'm so excited that I got to grow up with something like that and, ex and experience it. It was really cool. If you're ever in Colorado and you're in northern Denver and you get a chance to go near 104th and Riverdale Road or drive Riverdale Road from about, oh, I say 90th all the way up to 136th, it's a really cool place to experience it. It does not look the same, but make sure you um, tag yourself or check in at Riverdale Road so that everybody knows that you got to go to one of the most haunted roads and areas in the United States. If you guys have been to Riverdale Road, please leave me a comment below. Let me know some of your experiences. If any of my wonderful followers from Colorado out there decide to make a trip to Riverdale Road, please be respectful to the neighbors um, but I would love to know what happened um, to the land at 9190 Riverdale Road, which is where the Gates of Hell is located at. Um, has it been sold? Is it still kind of abandoned area? I would love to know. Please give me a thumbs up. Please leave me good comments below. And I will catch you guys next time.